Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome back to this week's Tiki Sessions. As always, Stuart Cullen from Robbie Board Company and behind the bar, Ash. And I know Ash, this week's a bit of a nervous one for you. Yeah, I've never been more nervous making a drink for a guest than this one. Uh, I feel like I'm going a little bit fanboy tonight, so I'm really delighted to have Alex Thomas along tonight. Been a big fan of the Bush Mills range and in particular the Sexton range. Alex is the founder of the Sexton Whiskey and delighted to have you along. I have made you a, an, an old fashioned, basically made with a, a there's like a turmeric, orange, and star anise infused sugar syrup in there. So I really hope you like it. Um, and if not, don't, uh, don't tell me. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to tasting it. It's fantastic to be here. And thank you so much for asking me. No, cool. Brilliant. But thanks for coming along. Now, I purposely didn't do much research um, into you tonight because Ash told me that you're an amazing speaker and you're really passionate about your brand. Now you're just uh, nervous. Exactly. <laughs> See, it's, that's how you shift the foot there, so it is. So, Sexton Whiskey. What is Sexton Whiskey? How did it come about? Tell me everything. Well, the Sexton's 100% Irish single malt. It's triple distilled in copper pot stills and it's aged in only Oloroso sherry casks. So it's an odd addition in how I distill, but I embrace innovation in how I actually mature the spirit. So I was very fortunate to start in the industry many years ago. I nearly don't want to say how many now. <laughs> <laughs> but back in 2004, I joined the Old Bush Mills Distillery, the oldest licensed distillery in the world. Yeah. I joined a team of people who were so passionate about whiskey. Been there 30, 40 years, and all they wanted to do was share that knowledge with me. Really humbling. Very quickly fell in love with maturation. For me, it's where the magic happens. You take the distillate, it's clear, it has a fruity flavour, but you transform it when you put it into a cask. And to watch the spirit grow and gather its flavour profiles and that colour is just something really amazing. And I wanted a part of that. I wanted to create something that would put the stamp on what I thought whiskey was about. Whiskey for me growing up was a very traditional spirit. My grandfather and my father drank it. So I suppose for me it was an older man's drink. Yeah. And I wanted to create something that would come away from that. And that's what the sexton's there for. For those that enjoy whiskey, neat, with ice. Or for us who are a little bit more adventurous that like to try it with a little bit of a ginger ale. Or one of these amazing cocktails that Ash can make. Brilliant. So that's where the idea came about and what I wanted to create. You can see how passionate she is. It's, all it's class. Like, and like yeah. for me, Alex, you, like any time you talk about it, you just... Like I, I've never really been an Irish whiskey fan, but I, you've probably sparked an interest in it for me. And like in particular, we are blessed in the North Coast with with Bushmills, with the Sexton. Ireland in general has obviously great like history of, of Irish whiskey, and like Scotland obviously is the number one producing region. But like we've got some real innovative whiskies coming from Japan and India these days. But for me, you guys are killing it. Like North America. In particular, so like I've been sort of following the stuff you're doing with Tales of the Cocktail in New Orleans or in, in, in New York. Um, it's brilliant to see you doing so well over there. So It really is. People have fallen back in love with Irish whiskey and the Sexton comes about during that time of the explosive rise of interest in it. Um, like we launched it back in 2017 in November in New York. And in less than a year, the Sexton became the number one selling Irish single malt in wow. America. And that. we still hold that title. Like, that's phenomenal. Yes. So it was really frightening to learn, you could actually go out and launch your own brand out in somewhere. Um, but to be able to bring it home in 2018 to Dublin and Belfast was truly amazing. Uh, and talk, talk, us, talk us through launching it in America, because, you know, we, we've talked to, to people about when they've brought products in from abroad to us. And, you know, like you're saying, Irish whiskey is a major thing around the world and Japan's a huge market and stuff like that at the moment as well but how how do you go about launching a whiskey in the United States of America? Well I would have to say I'm very lucky that there is a great marketing team behind me um, I can't take credit for anything <laughs> other than turning up on the event um, they are amazing they're really passionate about Irish whiskey and they all want it to grow in America everyone in America has a bloodline somewhere to the Irish yeah. and they truly are as passionate about Ireland as we are that live here and they just want to see something different. Single malts, they absolutely enjoy. They want to see something that they can play about with, just the way we want to. And to bring out a single malt at the price point that we're bringing out in America, really approachable price, a really great whiskey that they can mix in cocktails or drink neat with something that they really want it. Yeah. So it was a perfect place to launch it first and say to bring it home then to Ireland. And we, we actually went to the Belfast Whiskey Live and we outsold every whiskey there within the uh, year of launching it here. So it is exactly what I dreamt it would be. People are embracing it that 
way and they just really enjoy it. So you did have the expectation that it was obviously you launched something that's the same with Ash launching the Tiki Bar, me and my partners launching Raw we during COVID. We, ha we have this expectation of we want it to do well. I assume it's gone beyond what you thought it would be possible and you know the smile on your face tells me the answer <laughs> to that question already. Totally like I have never done anything as scary in my life as that yeah. first event and it will. Was that your first ever event in New York? That was my first ever Jesus public Alex. event and I have to say the nerves were absolutely terrible yeah. and what? if it hadn't been for the whiskey there. I, I, yeah. Where was it? Was it in a bar? Was it, it, was in, it was in a bar we brought the media there and we took them into an event afterwards so you have a group of people you don't know standing looking at you just staring at you, and you're thinking they're not going to listen to anything i have to say but they were just so calming and so interested about the brand i did tastings with them told them a little bit about it and from there it has just grown in strength to strength so i think when you're involved with a brand from conception to actually production and like you've obviously been there from the start and you go there and you talk with such passion about it and you know every single bit of it and you can stand as, as, as much as it must have been nervous, you've got co absolute confidence that you can talk about it. Yeah, and that's what Colin Megan always told me in Bush Mills, that just tell them what you know. Yeah. And that's all you have to do. Just tell them what you know and everybody will listen. And I was like, no, they don't want to. But they did. They wanted to hear about how the brand came about. They want to hear about the wood, how it matures. Like, I've got the best job in the world. I get to walk warehouses and smell and taste whiskey for a living. Which means you never work a day in your life. <laughs> Pretty life. much, yeah. yeah. So tell me about the name then, Sexton Single Malt Irish Whiskey. Okay, so when picking a name for an amazing brand, I wanted it to represent what we do in the industry. So the name Sexton comes from medieval Latin and it means the custodian of sacred things. Or more simply put, it's the caretaker of precious things. Wow. So I'm the caretaker of this amazing whiskey while it's in the cask and you and Ash behind the bar becomes its caretaker when it's in the bottle and in your glass. That's phenomenal and especially coming from Ireland that's such a mythical story and you can see the American market laughing that <laughs> up <laughs> as well you know um, and the, the, the design of the bottle is absolutely stunning so it is because you know we're, we're now into you know, you walk into Tesco's, you walk into an off-license, there's so many different whiskies, gins, vodkas, beers, wines, and you need to stand out for somebody to lift it, to read about it, to learn about it, to buy it. And, the, you know, this is the first time I've seen a, one of your bottles, and it's stunning. The artwork's stunning, the typography's stunning, e even the pour at the top is like, <laughs> it's a skeleton with a top hat on, yeah. and it's just right up my street yeah. design-wise. How did that all come about? Well, again, the barrels I use are half ton barrels, so they're about my height obviously, so they're called butt barrels, so they're huge big barrels, so the bottle's chunky just like the casks mm -hmm. that we use. Purposely black, because the best day as a master blender and distiller is the day you release the spirit from the cask for the very first time. You get to see how it is transformed, you get to taste it the best bit, and you get those beautiful aromas coming around. So by hiding it away in there, I'm taking away one of your senses. So your others will naturally heighten when you get to taste the whiskey. So you're not going to, by guessing what it's going to taste like in the bottle, you're going to wait and have that patience mm -hmm. to taste it when you bring it out. Again, the name Sexton represents the guy that lays the body to rest. So again, thinking back of Basic Sexton's my life story in a bottle. Growing up, as I said, my grandfather and my father drank whiskey, but most times it was during a wake when someone in our family had passed away. Our families got together and we maybe hadn't seen each other in a long time, but I don't remember those as sad. Mm -hmm. I remember the stories about that person that had passed. Some of them probably should never have been told. That's it. About the naughty things they got up to or the loves they had, uh, all of that kind of thing. And for me, that's a really nice thing. Yeah. So it's not sad. So that's what the sexton represents. It's about living life well and making the right choices every day that before you meet your sexton, that you have a life story worth telling. The sexton's my life story. And if many days after I'm gone, people are still enjoying the sexton, like, there's a legacy that is just unreal. Class, I, like I know a few bartenders that I know have went down to your launch in Dublin and what you created down there, like they're still talking about it. It was really cool, like chat through, because I've heard it from their point of view. And it was like, it was just unlike any launch I've ever heard. Like I've been involved with launching brands and in, 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 in different varieties over the years, but I think you nailed it. 
I think you're obviously <laughs> doing it in New York first or in, in America first and then uh, doing it in Dublin. But chat us through that. Yeah, minute. so the, the team have been fantastic. It's a fun brand and that's what it's all about. Um, so what we did was we went uh, and we decorated everywhere up, but we had an area where it was just enclosed, it was dark. People came in there, the lights were out, uh, they got a headset and then just basically they saw me. So anything they had to do was basically listen and smell. Wow. They couldn't see, they couldn't do anything else. So they got to experience everything. And as I say, your senses are heightened. So when you smell, smell the aromas of the whiskey that we're telling you, you really do smell exactly what someone is telling you. And the taste profiles are just so much better. And say, taking away that sense of sight, really excited and the, the fun was there, the thrill was there yeah. and it really was just an opportunity to do something a little different. Uh, when we did London we actually got a crypt um, underneath an old school, wow. it was an old jail many many years ago and right. uh, so we took them in round and we had our sexton there all dressed up and he took them in through all of the jails and talked about the people that had been there many many years ago same thing in through the dark and then they just hear and listen and it really does heighten the experience Brilliant. so yeah you see that, that's the thing and you know i'm historically not a whiskey drinker but that is the thing with with whiskey is that anyone that drinks whiskey it is a drink with an experience if you know what i mean and you know something like that where you're talking about the heightening of senses and all of that just adds to it and you know ash will know i've been involved in live events for 20 years and that just from my point of view sounds like a stunning way to launch to launch a brand and i know myself from running my own events as well as being involved in other people's events it's really scary doing an event so it is because it's a part of you that you've put into it and you just want everything to go right and there are technical difficulties that happen and stuff like that the day of your launch in new york you know what was that like for you oh, it, truly amazing it really was uh to have people turn up for someone who is not known in the industry who is coming from people who have been in the industry for such a long long time that's a wonderful thing about the Irish category we're a family mm -hmm. and they are so supportive of me they are there any time I need me, them I can lift the phone and they just want to help yeah. and that's how the family in America are as well they are so keen on the Irish category and if they want to grow it they want people to be back in love with it again so yes it was very scary very exciting it was like every emotion in the space of an hour yeah. um, and it really was the best feeling ever to have Brilliant. people tell you that something you have worked on for so long is good. Yeah, um, I think that's the thing, like for, for well, the whole point of the Tiki sessions, Alex, is to get like hopefully young entrepreneurs potentially watching it and seeing somebody who's taken something from conception right through to fruition. And uh, it's brilliant to see what you get, like what you've done, but like you're North Coast born and bred. I right? am, yes. And like we, we talk a lot about mm -hmm. like the North Coast and the uniqueness of it. And like we do punch above our weight with regards to sports stars with business people and I, like we, we, we always try and we ask every guest to see if they can sort of distill it down to say what is so magic about the north coast like what, what's your thoughts on the north well coast? i always think back to finn mccool yeah. <laughs> yeah, <nice. laughs> the whiskey side of things as well about scotland and ireland and we have finn with ben adorn so i always think we're the little guy yeah. but we are mighty so we yeah. may be small but we are all very passionate about what we do Brilliant. we're fighting our way back up again like ireland used to be the number one out there scotland came along prohibition was here so many things knocked us down mm -hmm. but we're not staying down yeah. we're all coming back up and we all want to showcase what we can do all across the island whether it be as you say behind the bar or whatever the industry is we all want to showcase what we can do because we do do it well and that's, that's what i always hate about watching hollywood movies and independence day is one that <laughs> jeff goldblum is sat there with a bottle of bush mills yeah and uh will smith comes in and he goes do you want a scotch and i'm like it's a bottle of bush mills you know it's oh. not scottish whiskey no we were t we've <laughs> sorry, oh, I'm that is so you. good can we Peter try ah uh, yeah Oh, good. Oh, very good. Look at Ash's face. Have to, have He's have happy as Larry now. It's so so it's such a relief. There, there's I, been I a didn't few... actually want to say the old fashioned is actually my favourite cocktail. Oh, nice. Happy um, days. So, brilliant. yeah, it's, it's one I try to make at home. I'm never as good as that, I have to say. Oh, but, there you yeah, go. No, so that's beautiful. If you want a good old fashioned, come to the Tiki Bar. <laughs> Absolutely. And totally. Ash right will do you we, we are. We're, we're, hopefully, we're, we're going to be hopefully known for sort of rum and tequila based drinks, but I think we might have to make an exception. Yeah, I think you will. And, you know, we've, we've spoken to a lot of guests about the North Coast and the allure to the North Coast. And one of the things that Ash is very passionate about is bringing good old fashioned hospitality and service back 
um, to the North Coast, and that's happening. You know, it'll be happening in Ashes Bar. It's happening in other venues around the North Coast as well. What What do you think about the hospitality industry on the North Coast? You know, we're very lucky that we are on an international stage, um, and you know, we have a lot of American guests and a lot of European guests and Asian guests. Um, what's your hope with the whiskey to be part of that? From drinking meat right through to cocktails, I think the Sexton is here to show that we can do that. We can versatile, we can go to different types of bars, we can be in tiki bars, we can be in whiskey bars, and we can still represent the industry that we're wanting to. Like I'm passionate about whiskey, and I don't mind how you drink it. That's I can't tell you the right or wrong way, it's your taste yeah. profile. You drink it your way. We don't all eat the same, so why should we all drink our whiskeys the same way? Um, we are wonderful in the versatility we have through the island, so you will find something in Ireland that suits your palate for sure. And I think it's really good as well because you're local to the North Coast and you know obviously with the North Coast we have the history of Bushmills whiskey. Um, but again, you know, just looking at your bottle, um, it totally sets itself aside from that and you've obviously your, your career history with Bushmills. Um, and I think it's going to be really good that whenever, because it first launched in America and we have a lot of American golfers come across to play our world class courses, that they're going to come across and it's going to be a recognised brand to them. And then they're going to be sit, sat somewhere on the north coast like this bar and you know the bar they'll be like can i have a sex and the barman will be like or the bar girl will be like you do know that it's from here and you know alex lives five miles that runs yeah. it five it's miles mad. up like one of the you most know. crazy thing that ever happened to me was we were on honeymoon and we were in bali and we went to i don't know if anyone knows like lombok is an island beside that gap bali but there's like these three wee islands called the gilly islands and they're the most remote islands you can imagine, and there's no cars, it's like everything's a horse-drawn cart and whatever. And we were out for dinner, and there's there the full Bushmills range behind this fucking bar. Yeah. And I was like, what is going on here? But, and I said, like, uh, do you know, and I had ended up, Hannah was raging, my wife was raging at the time, because I ended up doing like an Irish coffee. <laughs> in the bar? How to make an Irish coffee behind the bar. And I was like, because they were sitting, they were totally full, and they're like, we don't know how to drink it. And I said, right, we'll do it. So it's, it's so good that you're travelling about. You should go to the Gilly Islands, by the way, and get the yeah, second I think I have to. <laughs> you can uh, come to and make some Irish coffee. Sweet. And you do a lot of travelling. And Ash was telling me about New Orleans. And you were asked to go out there and, and speak at an event. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I had the privilege of going to New Orleans just for the year before COVID um, for Tales of the Cocktail. Brilliant. What a place. And I was only there for two days, but it is definitely a place to spend a month and it's got such amazing people there they're all really passionate about what they do and some of the best in the industry are there for tales of the cocktail so yeah total different experience from anything i've ever had before they're just so full of life so vibrant so just wanting to be there i've never been obviously but i remember i remember working with jacob briars and uh, jack mcgarry and we, we brought jeff the beach bum berry over for an event over and like just the way they talk about tales of the cocktail is just like it's mecca for bartenders and it just i'm so jealous that you got the not only just be there but you presented it oh didn't you? yeah that, to, to do that like i was on the radio i was doing events for the bartenders uh they were making cocktails for me i got to taste so many different variations of sexton cocktails but the wonderful thing for me is I never lost the taste of the whiskey. Brilliant. Sometimes it can be overpowered, overpowered and your yeah. base spirit yeah. is lost. Um, but they just seem to get the taste profile so well and match it up, just like yeah. you have with different flavours. There's such a distinctive like taste, and I, I suppose it's for the sherry yeah. casks can, can bring out. So you can, like in an ideal world for me, I, don't, like I, I love the taste of alcohol, so I'm always trying to like <laughs> dial up certain flavour profiles and sort of make it a, a, a little bit, not that it needs to be made nicer, but like dial up certain profiles and dial other ones down. And, and it's, it's such a great whiskey to work with in cocktails. So, yeah. um, Brilliant. That Stone. little bit of sweetness coming in from the sherry really just adds to it that yeah, little bit, totally. so it does work. So you've created Sexton. What are you like at making cocktails yourself? Absolutely awful. Really? <laughs> really? I would serve them to myself and my husband. I wouldn't give them to too many other people. Right, because Ash is looking bar staff currently. You <laughs> know, if he so trains me, I'll come. Because yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. he does some amazing ones. So yeah. exactly. Some of the things we've talked about in a lot of the Tiki sessions is... Uh, like resilience and one thing it seems to come up with an awful lot of people is imposter syndrome and like how I, I get it a lot the fact that I'm standing in front of a camera now is mind-boggling to me like a year ago after before Covid it would just wouldn't have happened but circumstances dictate that you just have to do it but like how did you a little girl from Coleraine or from wherever like and all of a sudden you're in New Orleans and in, in the biggest stage ever like how do you cope with that mentally physically um to see people turn up 
to see me. Mm -hmm. um, at some of the whiskey events I was over in New York and the girl had been the year before and she had heard I was going to be there and she came back Wow. just because she enjoyed what I had told her and listened about the whiskey and was telling me that she had made cocktails and she was telling all her friends. I, that's just very surreal. For someone who has just grown up normal, I, like I'm just your normal 5'8 kind of thing. And um, but you know what's great? Because like the whole point of this, and if we say it, I've, I've said it a few times in, in the sessions, but like I want hopefully young kids will watch this and, and like what you've done and what we're doing is sort of provide an alternative route for some kids who maybe don't want to be solicitors or lawyers or whatever. There is, and if you've got that entrepreneurial spirit and you're passionate about something, fucking go for it. And like, it's amazing to hear you, as I say, take it from from conception to fruition. But like, what advice would you give youngsters out there that just don't really know, but they've got a wee bit of an idea and feel like they want to go with it, but it's maybe not the norm. Follow your dreams. Yeah. There, if you work really hard at what you really want, what's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah. It may not go right the first time. The Sexton version one, as I'm going to call it, wasn't right the first time. Yeah. But you just get back at the drawing board and go again. If you really want to deliver on what you want to do and have a career where, it's, as you say, it's no longer a job, yeah. it's a hobby. Yeah. That's what you just keep doing and keep working at it and do whatever it takes to make your dream come true. And it can be tough sometimes, Alex. When you're, like, I don't know how you felt. Like Sometimes you're in a, a job that you don't really like and you're just feeling like you're going through the motions and like you think well, what the hell is happening here but you're learning experience you're learning resilience you're learning skills that you can adopt five six years down the line that you'll that, that will help you get through a shitty situation basically exactly like, be scared but thrive on that fear yeah. say, my first experience of speaking publicly about the sexton was the scariest thing I ever did. I would have probably said it was terrible. Yeah. I, I, like now thinking back, oh, how did those people even listen to what I had to say? But you do gain experience, you gain knowledge, you gather from other people, you watch how other people do things and you learn. Totally. Um, but yeah, everything a little scares you just makes you a little bit more alive. And it really is about learning because like, Ash and myself are not presenters. You know, I've spent twenty can years. You guess? <laughs> yeah, can you guess? I, I've I've spent twenty years behind the camera. You know, Ash started doing camera work during COVID. Um, you know, online and and then he phoned me one night and says, D "Do you want to do this sort of chat show thing?" And I was like, "Right, okay, why why not?" You know, and it is one of those things that I think people from this area are very good at taking risks. And you know, I I was saying to Ash, I was like, "Listen." He, I'm more than happy to do it, but you know, there's going to be people that are going to like take the piss out of me for doing it and stuff like that. And do you know what? Nobody has. Everybody's like, you guys are doing really well. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, again, we we're talking to Dave Hamill, um, who's a you know local celebrity, and Dave didn't realise he was a local celebrity, and he, <laughs> no he's, he plays That's the ukulele on YouTube, and Ash's, Ash's kids are like, you're interviewing the ukulele guy, <laughs> oh, we actually had to get a selfie with him for Ash's kids, <laughs> and <laughs> it, it is that thing that, you know, you're going up there, and, you know, you're talking, and that girl came back to that event because you're there, so, you know, without being ridiculous about it, you're a celebrity in the whiskey world, you know, and that, that is... And like when you first joined Bushmills, did you, did you ever dream, did you ever think that that would be a thing? No, um, never ever thought that anything, I would be standing in the front of selling the whiskey. Always yeah. enjoy being in the background, that's kind of where I'm more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, say love going out into the barrels, pushing the barrels, working with the guys out there is just so much fun being there from the barley coming in right through to the production side of things it's an experience and you get to see that all at the Bushmills distillery yeah. I guess it's one of the only green to glass distilleries and you really get to experience so many things but to say the other side of the industry has been so much fun like what you guys do you have such passion about it you have such creativity the cocktail industry is growing and getting bigger and bigger due to what you have a passion about so i think we're kind of growing along with each other and just yeah. to be part of that i think it's really fantastic do you know what like for me i've been lucky enough to go and visit loads of distilleries all over the world and there's two that stand out for me and, and uh, woodford reserve distillery is just class like where it's like single small batch distilled and you've got guys in denim dungarees with grey hair just rolling the barrels and it's like white picket fence and horses. It is up there, but Bush Mills mm -hmm. like, is, is such an amazing distillery. It's beautiful. The reception, like, like the, the tours, 
obviously ever like it's just such a brilliant distillery and it's great we like so many amazing things in the north coast for me it's, it's that, super. That's like, it. that was the dream for me when i found out i was going to get the opportunity to work there because anybody that lives on the north coast knows about the bush mills distillery and like to work there is a dream come true um, my husband already worked there stephen um and i'm sure he doesn't like taking me to work every day like but <laughs> <laughs> um it is it's great like he has yeah. such a passion about the industry as well and it just filtered through and say, it to just goes to show like you start off like as you, you didn't really at that time when you started in this still yes you were happy to do it but you never really dreamt of this but like showing passion and hard work can reap rewards and i think that's that's ultimately what we, we the tiki sessions for is bringing like business people local business people together to share an interest in the north coast but also showing how entrepreneurs and business people can actually make a success of things if they if they have that passion and drive to, to make it work. And as you say, having that inspirational people coming and supporting you really does help. I said it, Colin, Colin Megan at the distillery, Helen Mulholland at the yeah. distillery. They are there for anybody that wants to grow and know more about the brand. They're there to help and support in any way you can. Like the Sexton is a competitor to Bushmills. It's a sister brand, yeah. but they're there to support me. I get to do all my work at the distillery to make the Sexton. And like we launched it, we went out there to America and we're now the number one selling Brilliant. Irish single malt. So we're, we're beating Bushmills as and well. Do you know what I love respect, about it? Like I really love about it as well is we've, we've talked about in previous Tiki sessions about how the North Coast celebrates like strong females as well. And like mm -hmm. we talked about, we've talked about Sarah Travers, we talked about Claire Sugden, Angela Mulholland, yourself. And it's just brilliant to see that like it, in, a, in a very male dominated area behind the bar, like we, I used to try and make cocktail comps and you, it was very difficult to get females involved in it. And like, it's so nice that we on the North Coast do celebrate and it's, uh, without going off and up too much of a tangent, but it's brilliant that so many strong females come from this area as well. Yeah, I think we're all getting a wee bit more experimental than what we did years ago. I suppose a lot more women didn't get into this kind of industry yeah. because it was a more male dom dominated, possibly due to the, the nature of the work. It maybe was more physical than it is nowadays with different machinery and stuff, but we've been missing out for years. We really should have been getting in there and enjoying all the things that you guys have been getting to enjoy <laughs> over the it. years coming home bluffing saying you've been working hard <laughs> this, is I know. Work. this is work <laughs> i know I, I i would do a lot of international trips or i did before covid and my wife calls them my holidays and i'm like you don't realize you know and she's like no you're just on holiday work. Yeah. so what's the future for sexton then big and bold hopefully yeah, yeah really excited uh, obviously this is the first inspiration i'd love to see a sexton family out there um we're trying to get it out to as many people as possible at the moment to grow the brand it has grown much quicker than I had anticipated for sure. So it's about ensuring that I can consistent say a brand. I can support those that are supporting me and continue having the brand with them and hopefully move on to bigger and better things. We're working on a website at the moment for the UK and Ireland and we might have a few surprises coming out on it over the times, but I'm always experimenting. It's something that we do at the distillery and it's passionate for everybody. We want to see what we can really stretch ourselves and do. Um, so the future is bright and who knows where the sex going to end up. Uh in every bar in Ireland and yeah. America and across the world, hopefully. Yeah, before COVID, we had got into a lot of the airports and it was so exciting. As you say, yeah. you're about to take off out of Belfast and all of a sudden they're doing a tasting on the section and you listen and I'm standing there listening to them telling me and all about this whiskey. And no, nobody knows who you are. That's <laughs> That's really <laughs> like, and obviously COVID brought its challenges, like from, from an on-trade environment basically f closed overnight. Off-trade obviously picked up. Um, how have you found, like, uh, with regards to sex and COVID and also personally, how did you get through it? Um well, on a personal note, we, the distillery was obviously closed for three weeks at the uh, way back in April last year, and it was devastating for yeah. all of us. Um, we didn't expect ever to be in a situation where that would happen. Didn't foresee it taking as long for mm. everywhere to get open, and we're still not there. The distillery was able to open after the three weeks if safely. Everybody was able to come to work. Um, and we've, we'll, we'll support as many people as we can to get the industry back up and running. But it has been very hard for our friends and colleagues in the bartending side yeah. of things. Um, we just hope and pray that as many of them as possible can open up again and we can all get back out there and enjoy it. I personally miss so much of being out in the bar mm -hmm. industry. It's lovely being at home and trying things yourself. But to get that feeling and being out in the bar and... It's just like a celebration of a night, you know, being with your friends and family and somebody else doing all this hard work and making these brilliant <laughs> cocktails. That, that, that was an interesting thing because we uh, had a chat with uh, Claire Johnson from the Railway Arms in Coleraine. Claire's an amazing person, totally. great, great bar. And, you know, 
Claire got quite emotional whenever we were talking about COVID and the lockdown because it's her livelihood and it's her career and all of that. And I said to her, did you ever think about walking away? And Ash, she didn't even no. hesitate. She said, no. And I was like, that's such a refreshing thing to hear. You know, um, it's that passion behind her brand, which is her bar, the passion behind your brand, Ash's brand, my brand. And again, I think that's, you know, a great thing to see coming out of the North Coast as well on the world stage is people that are 100% committed to their brand and what they're doing and they will fight tooth and nail to make it work and make it succeed. And I think that's a really good sort of Northern Irish work ethic that comes out um, from us, you know. So um, keep on keep on pushing it and keep on fighting with it because it, it looks and tastes phenomenal, so it does. Great, Sweet. thank you. I'm, I'm so delighted you came in tonight, Alex. Thanks so much. Look, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so you. much for having me. I say it's a privilege and to follow from the likes of Claire. Is, yeah, she's an absolute star in what she does as well. She's my local bar and Good. definitely be out there to support yourself and her when we get awesome. back out and open well, again. Look Claire's forward bar to it. more often, I don't mind. It's Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Too much, right? Listen, Alex, thanks so much for coming on the Tiki Sessions and good luck with the future. Thank you very much and good luck to you too. Cheers, Cheers thank you. Cheers. Launcher. Wow, 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 wow.